Hi, my name is Jeff with Duda Labs. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch our video on resetting the smart radio to factory default. A few reasons you want to reset the device to a factory default condition is if the configuration appears to be corrupt. Uh, if the performance, when you see things, the performance seems to be unstable, um, inconsistent, um, or if you need to get the device to a known state and so you can restart uh, your, your, connect, your connection and your, and your network. Uh, those, are, those are some of the main reasons why. And we'll kind of show you the different methods to get the, the device back to a factory default condition. So how you get to the, the default through the reset is contingent upon a few things. If you have IPv4 access, network access into the device, you can do it either through the GUI, through the GUI, or you can also do it through the command line um, by SSH into the device, into the shell, and do it there. If you don't have IPv4 access, you can attempt to do it through IPv6 access, and then if that is not an option, uh, you can try a hardware reset as well. Okay, okay to reset via the, the GUI, uh, you go to Advanced Settings, and then System, and there's Backup Flash Firmware. In that section uh, where that page is, you'll see uh, Reset the Default option. If you can go ahead and do that. Um, that's where it will be, and I'll kind of we'll, we'll log in real quick and kind of show you that. Okay, let's log into the device. 10.223.151.21 is the device. We'll just go in real quickly. Okay, no password, we'll log in. Okay, as I said, it's in the advanced section, so go advanced settings. And it's under system. And backup flash firmware. And as we see it right here, to reset the defaults, perform reset, hit OK, and that'll set the device. And it takes about two or three minutes to come out of this set, and it'll come back uh, fully reset. The other alternative is to reset via the command line. Uh, you SSH into the radio at SSH root at the IP address of the radio. And this is the command that you would enter. First boot space dash y space ampersand ampersand space reboot. Um, we'll go ahead and do this real real time to kind of show you what, what that looks like as well. So we'll go ahead and SSH, SSH into the radio. Okay, we're as it we're in, and now we can run the command. First boot, re, reboot. This would be the response you would expect. Uh, you would you should get coming that it's going through the reboot phase and actually reset phase. Pardon me, it is actually resetting the radio to defaults. It takes about two to three minutes for it to complete. Okay, should you not have access to the device through IPv4, we can try to get in through IPv6. Uh, so how you do that is first step is turn off your firewall so you have nothing blocking your attempt to get access to the device. Turn off all the other unnecessary interfaces to the, to the device, uh, whether you're running Wi-Fi or other connectivity. Uh, we'll eliminate those interfaces so we don't capture those addresses. And then turn off the other smart radios in the, in the network to make sure that you're accessing the smart radio that you're targeting and not pulling other uh, IPv6 information from the other devices. Once we do that, we'll determine the index number of the interface to the radio, and we'll use that to, to log in through IPv6. Okay. Once we uh, are back into our command line, we'll go ahead and run the following command. NetSH interface IPv6 show interfaces. We'll run that command. That'll allow us to see what the actual index number is of the device. Then we'll attempt to ping it to make sure we've got connectivity to it by running the following command, 
uh, ping space dash six space F E eighty eight eight zero colon colon percent sign and then the index number of the device, wherever that index number comes up to be. It may it'll be different for different devices in, in the network. So we'll run that command to confirm we have connectivity through IPv6. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, let's go ahead and try to find the interfaces. Uh, there we go. So if we look down here, um, there's a few that are connected. One is Wi-Fi, which I couldn't disable because I have to use it to do the recording. Uh, we'll ignore that. And the other one that's connected is Ethernet 2, which is the interface to our device. So index 22 is the index, IPv6 index. Now we can go ahead and uh, try and ping it. So here's the command for pinging it, ping space dash six, FE80, colon, colon, percent 22. Let's go ahead and try and ping it. And we can. So we have connectivity. Now we'll use the following command to identify the actual IPv6 address. NetSH interface IPv6 show neighbors. We can copy that. And let's go ahead and try and run it. And we have interface 22, Ethernet 2. One thing to note is all of the uh, Doodle Labs devices have a physical address starting with 003011A. So if we look at this, and the root FE80 right below it is just that, um, 301A. So let's go ahead. This is the actual IPv6 address for the device. We can copy that. We're going to go ahead and run. Uh, I'm trying SSHM. So at SSHM, we have to take that base address and append to it the index, which is, again, percent %22. So we'll go ahead and take this, and we'll try and log in. So we've copied the command over, and we'll go ahead and run. Yes, we want to go in. And we're in the device. So we're logged in now through our IPv6 address. Um, we have choices now. So our choices are, once now that we're logged in through IPv6, we can actually go ahead and identify the IP address of the device, the IPv4 address, by using the following command, IP space A space show space dev space BR dash WAN. And if we run that command, we'll be able to see what the actual IP address is of the device, or, and then we can log in through IPv4, excuse me, the IPv4 address. Once we have that, we can log in through the GUI and do a reset that way, or, we can just go ahead, since we're in through SSH, just go ahead and run our SSH command through the command line, and that would be the first boot command. So um, either, either one of these the ways, we'll, this will reboot it. I mean, excuse me, this will reset the device. This will reset the device, or we can go ahead and capture the IPv4 address and go in by the GUI. Okay, now that we're in, let's go ahead and run this command uh, for IP to, to determine the IPv4 address. And now that we have it, it is 10.223.151.21. So if we want, we could log out of the command line and go in. But instead of that, let's just go ahead and run um, and log into the GUI. But rather than do that, since we're here, let's just run our command from the command line. And it's now rebooting or resetting the device to defaults. Now, if we can't get in through uh, either the command line or SSH, I mean, or uh, any of our IPv4, IPv6 options, we always could try a hardware reset. All right, let's take a look at the hardware reset options um, on the smart radio. And it's dependent upon device type. Um, but for all, basically the factory reset pin 
should be depressed uh, or pulled depending upon what device type to ground for between 5 and 30 seconds. No less than 5 and no more than 30. Um, factory reset only works once the device has been fully booted. So you'll basically reboot, power cycle the device and get it uh, rebooted, wait about three minutes and it's, it'll be completely booted up. Uh, and here are the following conditions or, or locations actually for each of the reset options. On the embedded radio, it has 2J and the M in the nomenclature indicates the embedded. Uh, you'll push a pin through the reset hole and a hold, there's a, there's a tactile, swi tactile switch be behind it. You'll hold that in for the recommended period of time between 5 and 30 seconds. At that point, the device will reset. If we look at the external radio, uh, there is a reset button inside the enclosure. So you'll take the top off the enclosure, the lid, press and hold the reset button after you've done the re reboot and it's been powered back up. Press and hold for the recommended amount of time, between 5 and 30 seconds. On the wearable radio, it's slight, slightly different. Uh, you'll disconnect power from the wearable, you'll hold down the power button and then reapply power while you continue to hold the power button in for between 10 and 20 seconds. When you release the button, the device will go into a reset mode. And for the Helix radio, the Mini OEM, dash 2L series, there's a, two options. There's a reset wire on the main connector pin, uh, excuse me, main connector, it's pin 11. You'll pull this pin to ground for the recommended time between five and 30 seconds. Or you can reset the radio from the, evalu uh, from the evaluation board if you have the eval board uh, eval kit interface to it. You'll basically pull the GPIO2 pin to ground. I want to thank you for watching our video on how to reset the factory defaults, the smart radio. Thank you again.